Okay, as a reminder, intermolecular structure is talking about bonds within molecules. So if we have a compound that looks like this, okay, this right here is the intramolecular bond. And that right there is the intermolecular bond that we call the IMF. So we're not talking about this one in this cycle. We are going to be talking about this one. So there's three major types of intramolecular bonds. There's metallic bonds between a group of metals. But let's look at just, it zoomed in on just two atoms. And we realize that even though these are two metals, um, and they're both technically positively charged when they form ions, um, what is holding them together is the delocalization or movement of all their electrons into kind of a sea of electrons, we call it, and it forms a glue that keeps them together. Um, then we talked about um, substitutional alloys and uh, interstitial alloys as being ways of decreasing the malleability or the ability for these atoms to slide against one another. In ionic bonding, we have a transfer of electrons. So this is when you have somebody with a low ionization energy, like sodium, ending in S1, meaning it's easier for sodium to lose one than gain seven, with somebody with a high ionization energy, like Cl, all the way over to the right, it's easier for Cl to gain one than lose seven. Um, and now that we're talking about bonding, we are going to call ionization energy electronegativity. So in this case, we have a full transfer of the electron, a transfer from sodium to chloride, leaving sodium with a positive charge since it lost an electron, which is negative, and leaving chlorine with an overall negative charge, fully negative, because it owns that electron. And right there, that's the ionic bond, this coulombic attraction between a positive cation and a negative anion. So in a metallic bond, you have the glue of the sea of electrons holding it together. In the ionic bond, you have a full transfer from low electronegativity to high electronegativity. And in a covalent bond, let's say we had two Cl's together. This one having a high electronegativity because it would rather gain one to have eight rather than lose seven. And if we had another Cl together... This one also having a high electronegativity because it would rather gain one than lose seven. Um, you're not going to have a transfer of electrons because they both pull pretty hard, in this case equally. So they're going to share those. And instead of a transfer of electrons, we have a sharing of electrons. And we use a line to show that. where this line here counts as two electrons. So this one has two, four, six, eight, and this one has two, four, six, eight. They don't fully own this, whereas like chloride here owns that. Okay. So metallic bond, it's the sea of electrons that holds them together. In an ionic bond, it's the transfer of electrons creating this coulombic attraction. And in a covalent bond, the intramolecular bond is held together via a sharing of electrons. So there's some rules for covalent bonding. Um, and this rule, really, we call the octet rule. And this octet rule says that all atoms want an octet or eight valence electrons. So electrons in their outermost S and P orbitals. Really, they want something S2 and something P2. Six. That's that eight. Now there's some exceptions to the rule. Okay. There's actually two major exceptions, and the first one is hydrogen only wants two. So hydrogen's octet, if you want, is two valence because it's trying to be like helium. Okay. And boron wants six valence, and that's a little bit more complicated. So we can talk about that more in person. So when we're adding up octet electrons via this formula I'm about to teach you, only non-hydrogen and non-boron atoms want eight. Hydrogen and boron wants two and six. I'm still going to refer to these as their octet electrons. So the formula, the number of bonds, 
I do Lewis structures this way, okay? We don't connect the dots. We use a formula because it works out every single time. So the number of bonds equals the octet electrons minus the valence electrons divided by 2. And divided by 2 simply because that is a sharing of two electrons. So for every bond, we must divide by two to represent the sharing of electrons in one bond. So this is what they want, this is what they have, and this is distributing what they have over two to make bonds. Let's go ahead and do some practice with this. So definitely freaking memorize this. You need to memorize it. So practice. N2, octet, well we have 8 times 2, so 16, minus valence. Nitrogen is in the fifth column, so it's going to have 5 valence electrons, meaning nitrogen always ends like this. Now you can go through and realize that nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, and count them up every time, or you can just know that you have one, two, skip the transition metals, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the column up above is the number of valence electrons. So valence electrons will be 10, five times two, divided by two. So this number is going to be equal to three. So that's the number of bonds. So you put each end next to the other end, and you write three bonds. And then you fill in everything else with lone pairs of electrons so that they have their octet. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Lewis structure done. Let's try water. Octet electrons. So we have hydrogen, which needs two, and there's four of those. So four octet electrons for hydrogen, and then eight octet electrons for that oxygen gives me 12 octet electrons, valence electrons. Okay, We know that each hydrogen only, it's in the first row, it only wants one valence electron, and each oxygen wants six, because it's in the sixth row, ends with S2P4, so we know that that's going to be six plus two, that's going to be eight, divided by two, so that's going to be two. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put oxygen in the middle to give this symmetry. And we're going to give the two bonds there and fill the rest in with lone pairs of electrons. So we know that hydrogen only wants two, so hydrogen's good. And oxygen wants eight. Two, four, six, eight. There we go. Now that's going to bend later, but we'll talk about that when I'm in class. All right, so... I'm going to do this a little bit faster, but you can slow down now um, and press pause if you like. So octet electrons here, we have three total atoms, all times eight. That's going to be 24 octet. We know that carbon has four valence electrons and sulfur has six. So that's going to be 12 plus four. That's going to be 18. So this is going to be... No, I messed up. Eight times three is 24, 12 plus 4 is 16, got it, Mr. Musal. So this is going to be 4. So we're going to put carbon in the middle for symmetry, and carbon also has the most uh, bonding power in this case. And we give the four bonds, so 1, 2, 3, 4, there we go. And we fill everybody else in so that it has its octet, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Two, four, six, eight. Good to go. All right, let's try SO3, two minus. These ones are really easy. You just add two extra valence electrons here. Um, the polyatomic ions, you just got to put it in brackets. New big deal. So this is going to be 32, four times eight minus valence. So here, all of these have six valence electrons. So that's going to be 20 fo divided by two, but we have two extra electrons. So we're going to change this to 20 
6, okay? So this is going to be uh, 32 minus 6, so that's going to be 6 divided by 2 equals 3. So S O O O for symmetry. Boom, boom. Uh, give everybody their octa. So two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, and put it in brackets. So the only difference, if you have a polyatomic ion like this, is that you need to add an extra electrons if you have a negative, and take away electrons if you have a positive, and um, your final answer needs to be in brackets. SO2. Let's try this pimp out. So you have uh, 8 times 3, 24, minus 6 times 3 is 18, divided by 2 to make covalent bonds. That's going to be equal to 3. So I have S, O, O, 1, 2, 3. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Two, four, six, eight. So that's good. Now notice with with this one, just what's your gut tell you about that double bond? Press pause and think for fifteen seconds. What does your gut tell you about that double bond? Okay, your gut should tell you that it was just random that it ended up on this side. It could have ended up on the other side, and when that happens, that process is called resonance. And that's just the idea that this double bond could resonate from either side, and it actually does. And when that happens, we make double-sided arrows and we draw both resonance structures, meaning we draw the exact same mirror image of the molecule. Resonance is really easy. Your gut will tell you if you end up with it. Okay, if you look at this one, these double bonds were locked in place. There's no double bonds here. There's no double bonds here. These double bonds were locked in place. So when the double bond can move around, we have resonance and we show it that way. Very simple. Here we go, CH2O. So I have 8 here. I have 2 times 2, 4 here, and I have 8 here. So that's going to be 20 valence electrons, I mean octet electrons. For valence, I have 4 here, I have 2 here, and I have 6 here. So that's going to be 12 of those divided by 2 to make covalent bonds. So that's going to be 8 divided by 2, that's 4. Okay. Now, whenever you get a situation like this, be careful because hydrogen can only have one bond. So that means that the remaining two of these have to go to that oxygen. Okay. So two, two, hydrogens are good. Two, four, six, eight, carbon's good. Two, four, six, eight, oxygen's good. There we go. NH4 plus. Okay. Obviously, you're going to be removing one electron here. So what we got here is octet electrons, brain fart, sorry, so 8 and 8, because 2 times 4, so 16 minus valence electrons, that's going to be 5 plus 4, that's going to be 9 divided by 2, but we take one electron away, so this becomes 8, so 16 minus 8 is 8, divided by 2 to make covalent bonds is 4, we give our four bonds. Plus, okay, two, four, six, eight. The nitrogen is good. Uh, one, two, four, two, 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 two. The hydrogens are good. So I want you to press pause and try this challenge out. And when you've done it, press play and we'll see if you got it right. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, let's do octet electrons. Eight. And 8 times 3 is 24, so that should be 32 octet electrons minus valence electrons. So that's going to be 5 there, and that's going to be 6 times 3, that's 18. So that's going to be 23. But since we have an extra electron, that's going to be 24. So 32 minus 24 is 8. divided by 2 equals 4. So 4 total bonds. So let's go through and do that. 
N O O O for symmetry. One, two, three, four. Give everyone else. So if you did this, unfortunately, you did not get it right. You kind of got it right, but I'm going to be a stickler about this. If you look at it, unlike this double bond where that is locked in place because it cannot move to that spot, this was just random. I could have ended up with it in any given place. That's called resonance. So we need to draw all three resonance structures, all three versions. Okay? And it's kind of annoying, but life's short. Let's just do it. Um, so the equilibrium arrows, what's the other option? The double bond could be on a different side. I don't care which side you move to. Ah! And the double bond could be at this side. So this has three possible resonance structures. That's legit. Minus. Okay. Notice that any time the auction has the double bond, there's only two other lone pairs there. And that's to have the octet. Thanks a lot.